Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar 2. As is our practice, we begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. In this course, we are studying the three types of samasas, namely the avyayi bhava samasa, the bahuvrihi samasa and the dvandva samasa. Right now we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa, which is an extremely important type of samasa in Sanskrit. The features of this avyayi bhava samasa can be explained using this simple equation mentioned on this particular slide where we have x and y two independent separate entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent x has its own word form so also y x has it got its own meaning so also y X has got an accent and Y also has got an accent. Now these two X and Y, they are semantically interrelated. The speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and then the output in terms of X, Y is generated. Now this X, Y is one unit in terms of the word form as well as the meaning. Now, in this x, y, the association of the constituents can also be shown, demonstrated. So we have highlighted that with the bold character in x. What it means is that x acts as the head of this particular avyayi bhava samasa where x is an avyaya as a constituent. Now, in the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, Avyaya generally occupies the initial position and it is an Avyaya. Now, the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is also noted down as an Avyaya by the Sutra Avyayi Bhavascha. And therefore, it is evident that the initial member of the compound, which is an Avyaya, shapes the form of the output samasa namely the avyayi bhava samasa and makes it an avyaya. X is an avyaya, Y is not an avyaya in general but the output form X, Y is an avyaya. Anavyayam avyayam bhavati avyayi bhavaha. So now when this x, y is linked with any other word in the sentence, it will be only through this x and can never be through y. This is how formally as well as semantically x, y function as an avyayi bhava samasa. In the Ashtadhyayi, the avyayi bhava samasa is stated in different places. For example, the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras related to the Avyayi Bhava Samasa are stated in 2.1, precisely from 2.15 onwards up to 2.121 including. This is a small section of sutras which state the 
avyayabhava samasa they all they tell us the semantic conditions under which the avyayabhava samasa can take place incidentally to 122 is the tatpurusha samasa vidhayaka sutra and we have already studied all such sutras in the first course on samasa in this particular series now we also have the samasanta pratyayas stated in 5.4 the samasanta pratyayas related to the avyayi bhava samasa are stated in 5.4.107 up to 5.4.112 these are the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras and we also have swara vidhayaka sutras stated in 6.2 for example the avyayi bhava samasa swara vidhayaka sutra is stated at 6.2.121 etc currently we are focused on the samasa vidhayaka sutras and we have already studied avyayi bhava and then avyayam vibhakti samipa samruddhi vridhyartha bhavat yaya samprati shabda pradurbhava paschad yathanu purvya yoga padya sadrishya sampatti sakalyanta vachaneshu etc it is important to recite this big sutra again and again so that it becomes part of the memory and it remains with you as long as you want it triggering the human independence so now let us study this sutra 2117 this is tishthad gup prabhruti ni cha a very peculiar sutra tishthad gup prabhruti ni cha what it means is that and the words tishthad gu etc are also to be considered as avyayi bhava samasa that is the meaning of the sutra tishthad gup prabhruti ni shabda rupani अव्ययी भाव सौज्ञकानी भवंती आई रिपीट तिष्ठद्गु प्रभृतीनी सूत्राणी तिष्ठद्गु प्रभृतीनी शब्द रूपाणी अव्ययी भाव सौज्ञकानी भवंती एंड दिस सूत्र कैन बी सेट टू बी अ निपातन सूत्र विदाउट एंटरिंग इन टू द डेरिवेशन ऑफ द वर्ड्स दिस सूत्र इज कलेक्टिंग सर्टन वर्ड्स पुटिंग देम इन वन बैग and saying that these are the words call them avyayi bhava and such sutras doing this are generally termed as nipatana sutras in a nipatana sutra a whole word is mentioned and it is stated to be grammatical so there is no root suffix division that is intended to be fulfilled no detailed derivation process is intended to be fulfilled no semantic conditioning is intended to be fulfilled because it is not fitting into one certain pattern in other words words it is not expected to follow certain pattern which other forms have followed now what do we do how do we account for such words they represent exceptional behavior on the part of these typical forms grammar collects all such forms and figures out a pattern which is common in these forms and then prepares rules based on these patterns and the derivation rules based on these patterns thus grammar accounts for a multitude of forms with sometimes a single rule in case of sanskrit the general pattern followed by the system of paninian grammar is that a pad is divided into a prakriti and pratyaya format in correspondence with the padartha being divided into prakrityartha and pratyayartha format so padartha being divided into prakrityartha and pratyayartha this is in the realm of artha part of arthakasha correspondingly pad which is being divided into prakriti and pratyaya which is part of what is to be called as shabdakasha and then a step by step derivation process takes place which generates the final output this is the system of grammar of panini in case of a nipatana sutra what happens is 
either the prakriti division does not match with the pattern or the pratyay division does not match with the pattern or sometimes the derivation process does not match with the pattern which is visible in some other forms or sometimes all three do not match or two do not match any of the two and so on so in such a case without entering into a grammatical explanation based on a pattern the grammarian declares such a form to be grammatical on declaration doing so is economical than formulating rules to account for such forms obviously such rules would be exceptional and they would be account accounting for just a singular form so it is better to state that such a form is grammatical rather than entering into construction of the grammatical rule now in case of a samasa the pattern is that it is made up of at least two padas subantas subantam subantena sah in correspondence with two padarthas and these two padarthas are interrelated when we talk of padartha we talk of artha in the realm of arthakasha and when we talk of pada we talk of the word which is part of the shabdakasha and these two are interrelated and correspond with each other now these two padarthas are interrelated and the generated output behaves in a certain manner for example head determination gender and number determination of the compound this is the general pattern that is followed in order to explain various samasas now in case of a nipatana sutra in the samasa section some of these patterns are observed not to be followed strictly either the semantic condition is different than the pattern or the formal behavior is different than the pattern or the matching between semantic conditions and the form is different than the usual pattern so in such a case without entering into a grammatical explanation based on a pattern the grammarian declares such a form to be grammatical doing so is economical than formulating rules to account for such forms if there are a number of forms behaving in this particular manner they all are collected together and put in a particular bag and such a bag of words is declared to be grammatical the concept of the bag is extremely important such a bag of words is declared to be grammatical at times such a bag of words has words with some amount of similarity in dissimilarity with each other but in the course of time other words with less similarity are also put in this same bag sometimes words with no similarity are also put in such a bag this is the gradual progression in which the words enter these bags these are the devices the grammar has and they are used they get developed in the course of time in this particular manner such a group of words the bag of words is then called an akriti gana akriti gana an open ended word list now in case of the list of words tishthadgu etc what happens is that the semantic condition is not that of an abhyayi bhava samasa yes this is extremely important in case of the words tishthadgu etc the main reason why they are listed and panini did not try to explain them using sutras is the following that the semantic condition is not that of an avyayi bhava samasa what is the semantic condition of an avyayi bhava samasa generally the avyayi bhava samasa is purva padartha pradhana the purva pada and its meaning they act as the head as we have seen at the beginning of this lecture in the form of an equation 
सो एन अव्ययी भाव समास इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी पूर्व पदार्थ प्रधान राधर द वर्ड्स इन दिस लिस्ट तिष्टदु एक्सेट्रा दे आर नॉट पूर्व पदार्थ प्रधान राधर दे आर अन्य पदार्थ प्रधान विच इज अ पैटर्न ऑफ अ बहुव्रीही समास दिस इज वेरी पिक्युलियर द वर्ड्स इन द लिस्ट तिष्टदु एक्सेट्रा सेमेंटिकली दे आर अन्य पदार्थ प्रधान विच इज अ फीचर ऑफ द बहुव्रीही समास सो बहुव्री ही समास इज ऑल्सो अ क्वालिफिकेशन ऑफ अनदर नाउन ऑलवेज अ विशेषण बट फॉर्मली वर्ड्स इन दिस लिस्ट बिहेव लाइक एन अव्ययी भाव समास दिस इज द पॉइंट दे बिहेव एज अव्ययस एंड एट सच सच वर्ड्स कैन नॉट बी क्लासिफाइड अंडर वन कैटेगरी वेर सेमेंटिकली a word is a bahuvrihi samasa and formally it is an avyayi bhava samasa obviously panini has got a choice and he made his choice and he gave preference to the form over the meaning and classified these words as avyayi bhava samasa and declared them as grammatical by enumeration this is how panini dealt with this particular list of words also known as tishtad gup prabhruti ni in the sutra tishtad gup prabhruti ni cha rather than explaining the unclassifiable forms with lengthy descriptions the grammarian chooses a more economical way however in doing so he gives preference to the form and therefore lists them these words under bahuvrihi under avyayi bhava samasa and not under bahuvrihi based on semantic conditioning so for example we take the first word tishtad gu and analyze it what does it mean it means tishtanti gavaha yasmin kale dohanaya sakalaha so in the samasa output tishtad gu there are two words which are visible or audible tishtat as well as gu tishtat stands for tishtanti and gu stands for gavaha but neither of them is the head semantically it is the time which is being qualified by tishtat and gu that is what is the head in this particular samasa which is exactly the anya padarth pradhanya which is a hallmark feature of the bahuvrihi samasa what this means is that time of the day when the cows allow milking tishtanti gavaha yasmin kale dohanaya so the cows allow an individual to milk them in a particular time zone and not at any time that particular time is referred to as tishtat gu neither tishtat nor gu occupies the head position but the outside of the samasa namely kala occupies the head position as well as as far as the form is concerned and also as far as the meaning is concerned so this samasa refers to kala as the head as it qualifies the kala semantically but not formally formally tishtat gu is an avyaya and therefore panini classifies the list of words that begins with tishtat gu as avyaya now here is the list here are some elements which are part of this list they are similar in nature with tishtat gu formally they are avyayi bhavas behaving as an avyaya semantically they are bahuvrihi is qualifying some other element out of the samasa let us read those one by one after tishtad gu is vahad gu 
the time when the cows are brought back, brought home. Ayati gavam, khale yavam, khale musam, luna yavam. The time period when the barley is being cut. Luyam mana yavam. Puta yavam. Puyamana yavam. Samrata yavam. Samriyamana yavam. Samrata busam and samriyamana busam. All these refer to the time period when all these actions are done. So samrata busam, when the busa or the husk is removed. Samrata yavam is when the barley was collected and brought. Puyamana yavam when it was being purified, etc. These are the various meanings of these samasas. Similarly, we have samabhumi and samapadati. So, evenness of the land and evenness of the food soldier. Similarly, sushamam, vishamam, nishamam, dushamam and aparasamam. Goodness or of evenness, that is sushamam. Opposite of evenness, that is vishamam. Absence of evenness, that is nishamam. Bad evenness, that is dushamam and other evenness that is aparasamam. Similarly, we have ayati samam, papasamam and punya samam, which means coming year, unmeritorious year and meritorious year respectively. Similarly, we have pranham, praratham, pramrgam, pradakshinam and aparadakshinam in this list. What they mean is, Pranam means an advanced day, Pararatham means an advanced chariot, Pramurgam means an advanced animal, Pradakshinam means advanced towards the south, and Aparadakshinam means other south. Similarly, we have the word Samprati and also Asamprati. What it means is now or not now. The next very important form which is part of this list is Danda Dandi and Musala Musali. This is once again a very important yet complex phenomenon. Danda Dandi and Musala Musali are the examples of the Sutra that we shall study when we study the Bahurihi Samasa. Tatra Tena Idamiti Sarupe. This is the Sutra and these are the examples of the Bahuvrihi Samasa. Obviously, semantically they are Bahuvrihis, but once again they are formally the Avyayi Bhavas. So even though the meaning is that of a Bahuvrihi, preference is given to the form and the words are listed under the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. So Dandadandi means the fight happened with one man striking stick on another and another man striking stick on the first. Mutual strikings happen. Similarly, Musala Musali means the fight happened with one man striking Musala. Musala is a particular weapon on another and another man striking it on the first one. So there is a mutual striking of these weapons. And this particular event where both are striking each other is called Danda Dandi or is known as Musala Musali. Now here we know that the suffix itch is also added at the end of the Samasa. Therefore, we have danda dandi, where the constituent is danda and not dandi. But there is a samasanta pratyaya e added to it, which makes it danda dandi as well as musala musali. By the sutra anneshamapi drishyate, danda becomes danda and musala becomes musala. The 
this is how some exceptional words are treated in the Paninian grammar in the form of an Akriti Gana. This is very peculiar. We noted down this phenomena, namely that semantically some words are closer to Bahuvrihi, but formally they are very close to the Avyayi Bhava and Panini chooses the form over the semantics and classifies them under the sutras which prescribe the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Next, we keep on studying the processing of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa that happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras, how this particular process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output, output behaves in the sentence. This we shall study next. Here are the texts referred to Ashtadhyayi of Panini, Samarthanhika from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali, Vakyapadiya of Bhartrhari, Kashikavritti of Jayaditya and Vamana, and Samasa Prakarana of the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumidi of the great Bhattuji Dikshita. Thank you very much.